Hey everyone and thanks for joining us for another Airbrush Asylum Raw video. Today we are going to be working on this motorbike uh, helmet chin guard. Um, I'm going to turn this into a skull, so not a full skull obviously, but just the jaw area um, and sort of the, uh, the cheekbones there as well. So uh, let's get straight into it. Um, the paint that we're going to be using is the Createx Illustration Colors, the Bloodline series. Um, we're going to start off with illustration dermatitis tan and then we're going to follow up with illustration decay and then we'll put some highlights and um, some deeper blacks in there as well if necessary. Alright so you can see I haven't drawn anything out I'm just going to freehand it so I'm going to start with my Iwata HPC S Eclipse which has the 0.35 needle in it and starting off with the the Eclipse are just going to basically mark in kind of the nostril area. Essentially just sketching with this brush. Trying to find the center line. So See, a little bit messy, but that's fine. I'm going to clean it all up later. I just want to get a bit of a bulk on there and a sketch on there so we know where we're going once we deepen our shadows. So we can adjust that more. Since the center is about there. Just put a line down through it so we know. See, I'm a little bit off, but that's all right. Let's feather that out. You can see my paint's not overly um, thin, even though I usually like to use really thin paint. I wanted to get a bit of um, a bit of coverage on here and just a bit more adhesion to start with. I have prepped the surface using um, just a automotive prep sole like a wax and grease remover by House of Colour. So wipe that on and wipe that off first. Once I did that, I followed up with a water-based cleaner by House of Colour and um, just wiped off any of the residue. And then um, after that was done, I sanded with 1200 wet and dry just to rough up the surface. And then I again cleaned it off with uh, the degreaser. We're just going to map in roughly. So this is really just sketching at the moment. You know, I'm just trying to establish where things are going to go. And then we can detail once we hit the next tone. So that's why I'm being a bit rough with it. I do have a reference of a skull that I'm using, but... Um, just a very loose reference. Just Apologies if uh, some of the shots you can't see because of the camera angle, but basically just trying to replicate both sides, but you'll get the idea. And these teeth can be brought down a little bit. So there's a bit more of a gap within that area there. that 
jawbone up like that, flow in with this part of the um, chin piece. Probably remember uh, that I did one of these years and years ago, um, just using black and grey. This time I'm using the uh, this particular dermatitis tan is more of like a bony flesh colour, so I thought that's perfect to start start with and um, map it in with the first layer. And I thought I may as well film it so that you can see how a a bony one is airbrushed. Just getting some coverage on there. Looking at my proportions and reasonably happy with that. Check the top here to make sure I've got paint along the top edge. The back of it has been masked up using some uh, green 3M scotch tape. Any masking tape generally will do. What I might do is um, see here it tapers off so I might use that to my advantage. Run some extra teeth in there. They look like they're disappearing. And then we have, so we might make that the gap. So this is the joy when you when you're just sketching away. You're essentially making it up as you go. If you're not confident with um doing this freehand by all means um, sketch it out first or, or cut a paper template hopefully you can hear me well enough so now we'll a lot of this area then will blacken out so again, I'm just getting that base coat on there as quick as possible. That's looking pretty cool. So far, so good. I'm happy with all the uh, lining up and everything. Um, so these bits here will brush them a bit. See there that was a bit light. I can go back over that later but I thought may as well hit it now. Alright. Leave it at that for the moment for that particular colour. So now we're going to use the as I mentioned earlier, the dermatitis tan. So you can see there. Sorry, dermatitis tan. Read the label, Carsten. Illustration decay. Okay, so we're going to use that one next just to further shade. We're also going to take the opportunity to start adding in a bit of texture. So let's start with that first using a texture template here by Gerald Mendez. Um, this is the one that comes in series two of the templates, texture effects two. So we're just gonna come in and add a bit of that here and there. Remember texture, you can build it up as you go like I am. Um, we're going to do some freehand texturing as well, but it's just nice to get 
a bit of texture in there now because that'll sit underneath as we build our tones on top. All right, so I'm going to start with the nostril area. Just render that out. Uh, might even use some of these freehand shields. The True Fire. This is the uh, True Fire 2 series for anyone that's interested. And we're going to do a combo of freehand as well as masking just to pop out some of the little edges. Seems to be extremely thin. I like it thin, but it's like water. What's going on? Okay. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, apologies for that. So we're going to start to deepen the shadows now using this illustration decay, which is a bit of a, it's almost a bit like a sepia. this on there to get pop out some of these edges Start rendering some of these teeth.
but if you want to adjust the uh, size of your teeth now um, this is when you can do it so just don't follow your existing lines straight off the bat remember I said I wanted to make them a bit smaller so I've just done that there again utilizing a bit of a template first just to get some harsh edges nothing wrong with that a lot of people are so fixated on doing everything freehand but which is good as well I mean if you've got the freehand skill to do it that's great but some things you do need to come in with a bit of a template just to break it up and um, I think a lot of the artworks when you combine the two I try and do quite a bit of freehand as well as um, using the template it just tends to help to make your artwork look a bit more realistic all of the time I like to get the you know the nice sharp edge and then um, come back in but it's hard to aim like that oh, you get the idea might actually might be easier just to switch follow it up with some freehand Start adding um, a few little details here and there into the actual teeth. Again, apologies for 
Probably can't see this side that well, but So this time I'm going a bit sharper, but again, I'm not too concerned if every stroke isn't perfect. Because I'm still gonna come in with the darker tone. So I'll come in with a thinned out black. The template again, just to get that edge. One along here as well. See how that really lifts. A bit further away now for these shadows. Half harsher shadows there. You can see it's starting to really, even just with this tone, how much more it's shaping up. Add some texture. So you can see so far, I'll just twist that around. See the other side. So virtually just replicating what we're doing on, from one side to the other. But again, you know, it's difficult to see because I can only film one side at a time.
going to darken off these back teeth here and make them appear as though they're disappearing into the shadow. Some fine cracks. So you get the idea of what's going on the other side. You can see here, it just um, blacken that in, the um, decay. You can see it's starting to get a bit more of the 3D element. I'm gonna spin this around now and pretty much replicate what I just did. So you can see, pop that up a bit more. Bringing some shadow in here. Yeah, a 
going to crop that jawbone out now. Like so, and blacken off the rest. You can see it doesn't take much. I mean, that's only two, two tones, but we've already got a lot more depth and realism coming out now. Once we put the white highlights on, which will be the next step, but that's um, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Might just cut that in a bit more. It's actually pretty good to work on. This um, It's kind of a bit rubbery, this material, but Keep in mind if you are going to clear coat something like this that you should probably speak to your painter um, and get some flex aid put into the clear. Let's take that off that for a sec. Let's work on this top area. The reason being is you, um, by putting flex aid in, you do the same for um, snowboards and anything obviously that's flexible. Uh, two pack clear will have a little bit of flex, but um, not, you know, not to the extreme where you can see there's a bit of flex in that already. So just keep that in mind whenever working on something that is, um, you know, not a solid surface like a bonnet or something like that is fine but anything with a bit of flex like I said snowboard surfboard um, you'd want to be putting a flex aid in the clear just to safeguard yourself you don't want it cracking especially if you've spent hours and hours you know doing some crazy artwork on it and then you ruin it because of the clear it wouldn't be very good so I think I'm pretty much done with this tone now I've got a nice depth to it. I know where I'm going and now I'm going to further add detailing. I'm going to switch to white now and I'm going to further detail everything and um, using highlights, add texture and obviously lift certain areas and then I'll come in with the final black and should be done. So let me just grab another brush and I'll change the color. See how it flows. I haven't thinned it. Um, I'm just using the Createx illustration color, and this one is Old Bone White, and it, again, it's from the Bloodline series by Tim Gore. So, why am I using this instead of white? Um, basically, just it's not as stark, so I think that'll be good. You know, when we're talking about adding highlights to a skull, we don't want it exactly too bright I mean it's still going to be bright but um, it takes a little bit of the edge off that's all so what I'm going to do now is really brighten up any highlights that really need to pop so just looking at my reference and this will really start to make the skull look a bit more like bone and give it that 3D element that we're looking for. So I'm using my custom Micron CMC Plus. This is actually my really old one, but I um, still love it. This is at least 15 years old, I think. Now you'll notice that I'm getting a little bit of um, what I call crackling. 
you know, around some of the edges, but I'm not too concerned because that's why if you've watched any of my other videos, I always do the white before my final tone. And I'll, that way I'll come in and clean that up. You see how much more depth that's given that. Again, be careful with your white, don't, you know, overdo it. It's quite easy to get carried away. another template now actually I'll use the one I used before first just um, gonna use some of this finer area there actually if I sit that down like that I might be able to see you can see there it's starting to add nice little bits of texture what I might do is I'll focus on this area where you can really see what's going on and then I'll spin it around being a raw video it's um, you know the idea is not to chop and change I'm kind of just uh, grabbing the airbrush hit and record and you get what you get basically including my mistakes which is I think what a lot of people are enjoying so thanks for that <laughs> I don't mind A combination of um, freehand highlights as well as using my template. As I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with using a template. Um, you know, you can also use eraser pencils and all sorts of things. It's a bit harder to use them on on automotive surfaces, but. It is possible, especially if you're using the illustration colors. But don't be afraid to use whatever tool works to get the best result. I mean, ultimately, if a template is gonna give you the texture and make the uh, artwork look a lot better, then why wouldn't you use it? You know, there's no point in trying to Stay completely freehand. I know that was my theory when I first started airbrushing, but you know, a good friend of mine who we host every year, Drew Blair. I'm sure if you're into airbrushing, you've heard of him. He does amazing photorealism artwork. That's what he's renowned for. Um, and uh, after doing his class, that really opened my eyes. on how to uh, create a more realistic effect by utilizing everything from paper templates to eraser pencils, freehand templates. And he made it very clear that in realism, if you look at an artwork, a lot of the time, highlights and shadows are either sharp or soft. So when they are extremely sharp, if you want something to look extremely realistic, well then you need to replicate that. And yes, you'll get it sharp with an airbrush when you've got control, but you're never gonna get it as sharp as say a blade if you're rendering hair, you know, things like that. So it doesn't matter how good you are with an airbrush. So it's just food for thought. Everyone's different, but at the end of the day, it's art, so do what you want to do.
like personally I'm not I'm not into full-on photorealism it's not my thing I totally respect everyone that does it but you know for me I don't enjoy painting uh, full photorealism as much as I do something that looks semi-realistic but still has a bit of a fantasy element you know hence why I really enjoy doing skulls and all sorts of other things apart from portraits it's probably my least favorite thing to paint but everyone you know each to their own there's a lot of people that they love it you know I mean Drew that's what he's famous for even though he does a lot of other things but you know another friend of mine Mike Lavalley who uh, created the true fire effect you know I'm loving his work at the moment because it's got just a real cool painted style to it you know it looks painted and I love that I just think you know he's really taking it to a next level as far as airbrushing is concerned he's just creating a really cool style that you know is his own and yeah I'm just digging it so check out his stuff if you haven't already or if you don't know who he is but um, if you've ever painted true fire he's the guy that started that whole craze You can see the white's really starting to pick everything up now. Lifting the cracks, which is cool. come in with our black thinned out black and we'll, we'll call it done so obviously you could use same color scheme and um, techniques to render a complete skull this is obviously just the jaw area And you'll find you'll you know you'll paint a skull and you'll start to develop your own style as well and that's something that we really push our students to do we want them to um, you know create their own little version of what they see okay so you can see that sides rendered now with the white I'm gonna flip it around see this bit virtually doing the same in hindsight I probably should have been flipping this artwork as I was painting it so you could see both sides but I'm sure you can um, understand from one side to another and remember being a video you can always pause rewind go back watch things over and over and for that reason uh, we always try and add more into our videos especially with these raw videos you know like um, just letting the camera roll I mean there's times when yeah okay I could edit it all out and but you know, if you if you're bored with the section, just fast forward.
If this is the first time that you're uh, watching one of our videos, welcome. Uh, we'd love to have you as part of our community, so feel free to hit subscribe and um, tap on that bell icon. That'll notify you every time we put out new content. We uh, try and do one to two videos per week. Same thing if you want to leave a comment. Always love reading all the comments. Almost done with this white. A bit brighter on that side, so we'll just match that up a little bit. Actually a lot of fun to paint these um, chin guards. If you haven't done one, maybe uh, grab one and have a go. Alright, I think I'm going to call that done for the moment. So let me just uh, switch to the black. Almost like a bit of a zombie skin coloured skull. It's not bad. We can work with that. Now the idea now is we're going to use um, a thinned out black, but we don't want to obviously just paint everything in solid black. We want to shape things. So, starting with all the deepest spots, deepest shadows, I mean. So we can test it out. I might test it out in the nostril area so you can see what's going on. Just spilt a heap of black paint on me. It's all good. Getting messy is not a problem. So now I've moved to my side feed. Get this moving. Got a 0.18 mil needle in this one. CMSB Micron. So you can see that previous tone is still reasonably dark. So I can just come in and deepen my shadows without compromising on the detail. So hopefully you can see that from the video. You can take your time now with this step.
and as I mentioned earlier this is going to clean up our white overspray work on these teeth so we might go back to our trusty templates here and hit some of those areas use this one instead I think just along the tops there just to pop them out a bit Nice and careful. Fix that edge up a bit. see how the combo of using a template with freehand just adds a bit more realism to everything so we're going to do the same while we've got it right through on this other side You can see the paint sticking nice and well. There's um, pretty much been quite aggressive with this template. Hopefully you can see what's going on. Getting to the tail end of the artwork, so Okay, so that's, just give you a look, that's all the shadows there, so we'll just do the bottom ones now, pull out some of those, pull out some of those teeth, no pun intended. Okay, I'll just, just want to hit that edge, you can see if it's not sitting flush or close to the surface we're going to get a softer shadow which is not really what I'm looking for at the moment but you can use that to your advantage so keep that in mind if you're using freehand templates I mean that's why they're called freehand templates lift them up off the surface and that's going to give you a softer edge okay we might spin this guy around Let's do the bottom I'm probably blocking half of this, but it 
work these ones in. So the teeth are really taking the longest. I'm going to quickly put these in without moving it because I'm in a good position here. So just bear with me. I'll um, flip it around in a second and show you. Okay. And now we want to just come in the top, add a bit of a drop shadow, like a sharp shadow there, to lift some of those off of the lower section of teeth. Did a tip dry, I knew that was going to happen. Hasn't been too bad today. Their brushes have pretty much behaved themselves. A lot of my microns I actually uh, swapped over the uh, needles and nozzles so they should be working. <laughs> Okay, we're good with that. So now let's do some freehand. Before I do too much more, that's the other side. Okay, let's see where we're going with that. If you want any of the products that you see in this video, without being too much of a sales pitch, but um, you can either purchase them if you're in Australia through our online store, or alternatively, if you are overseas, you're more than welcome to use our Amazon Influencer Store. We've um, I'll put some links in the description of this video for that. Um, there's also a video explaining all about it, but um, basically what it is is it's an affiliate link for us. So if you buy anything, it will get shipped from that specific supplier. So we don't ship it. Um, you pay them, gets shipped, and then we get a small percentage for recommending the product. So a good way for us to be able to service our overseas clients without having to send stuff overseas which we don't really want to do at the moment um, and we're happy just to make the affiliate commission at least it gives us something out of it so and yeah all the same products obviously our oh, water airbrushes you know the templates so been reasonably popular a lot of people are using it now so we're making a few sales through there so thank you for anyone who has used it hopefully you got your product promptly and I'm sure you did all right let's finish off the dark shadows in here gonna use a template to really pop that 
jawbone out and we'll do the same on that other area in a minute. Um, this bit here, so again just freehand as well as um, using the template. So we'll just darken that off. dust over that from a distance to again make that look like it's disappearing in the distance. Detail out some more of these cracks. Getting on a weird angle here so trying to airbrush on a different angle here so you guys can see what's going on. Again, use the template to pull out that. that shadow in there. off of this area blacken that out bit of black shading under here Texture. Now we can render off this area here. This will stay. There we go. Same thing. We're going to pop this part of the bone out using the template. Freehand out from there. Darken the, sh the cracks and then a bit of free hand through there and blacken all this out. So, same procedure as the other side, bit of a drop shadow here, more texture. I think you're starting to get the idea. We've got a fairly sort of grubby look, which is kind of cool, it's what I wanted. Make it look like old bone, not super clean. And blend all that out. And I reckon you could keep coming in and working more, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to dust this out a little bit on that side I think for what I'm trying to achieve I'll just shadow under there a little bit but pretty happy with that so let's just spin it for the camera so you can see the end result but overall 
I mean, you could come back, like I said, you can come back in more with um, with white highlights and bits and pieces if you like, but you get the idea. Move that over a little bit, but that looks like a nice skull jawbone. And we've got, we'll see if we can get up a bit closer and show you some of the details as well. Move my thumb out of the way. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope that you will go and grab your airbrush and do some amazing artwork. Until next time, feel free to check out any of our other videos and thanks again for watching. We do really appreciate it. In the meantime, if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe. We have plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials, quick tips, airbrush insights, showcase, live streams and much more. You can also visit our website at airbrushasylum.com.au. Thanks for watching.